Hello, and I will be presenting to you CSS animations. That is not a picture of me, but it is a picture of a cat. <laughs> so, how many of you have used CS anima CSS animations before? Okay, so like half. I think we can probably all agree that CSS animations are useful for entertainment. Um, but I don't think that's all they do. I think they can really have functionality attached with them. They can draw your, your user um, to a certain element. They can really um, make sure that your user is paying attention to something. Because you all may know that um, moving objects or pretty objects uh, attract the eye. Um, so, whoops. This talk is going to be a little bit meta because I'm going to be using CSS animations to grab your attention as I talk about CSS animations. Um, and I'm also just going to go over the basics. CSS animations can do crazy things. And I actually want to show you an example of that. Oh, isn't that awesome? That's just with CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. But I will not be showing you how to do that. So I'd like to just go over the basics, first of all. Um, there's two parts. If you look at the code snippet, there's the defining of the keyframes animation function. And then you have attaching it to um, your CSS selector. So in this one, we're calling our animation function make my paper look bigger. Many of you, many of you may be familiar with this function. You may have used it to get your um, college papers from, I don't know, six pages to like 12 pages right before you had to turn it in by increasing the font size and the margin. Um, and so we just attach it, and then we're indicating um, duration with the five seconds, and then forwards is our um, animation uh, direction. And by the way, this is uh, the shorthand. The longhand would be animation dash name colon animation dash duration. This is the shorthand. So let's take a look at that. So we're gonna open paper.html. And I'll give you a second to appreciate these analogies. I found them on the worst analogies ever. They're pretty good. OK, so I just want to dive a little bit more into the properties and what they mean. So you have your animation name. Um, we can call it whatever we want, as I said. You have your duration. One of them is taking one second. The other one's taking five seconds. Pretty easy one. Animation timing function is going to uh, define the acceleration of your animation. A lot of them come built in, like ease in, ease out. You can actually define your own, which is awesome. I'm not going to go over how to do that in this talk. You should check it out. Um, and then we have animation delay. That can be none. That can be a positive value. So it'll delay the animation after the element has loaded on the page. It'll wait that number of seconds and then start the animation. And it can actually be negative which is kind of strange. So your animation, um, your, your element loads, and then it starts the animation right away, but it starts the animation that number of seconds into it, which seems kind of silly to me, but I, I'm sure there must be use cases. And then we have iteration count. You can have a number specified. The default is one, and then you can also have infinite. Animation direction, this one's pretty obvious. In addition to normal and reverse, you can also have alternate which would be something you would use if you have more than one for iteration. We have animation fill mode, which I'll actually go into a little bit later, and animation play state, which is useful for like hover events, so it can pause the animation and then continue it. And this slide is actually for you guys to help me. In case I forget what I'm doing next, this is the order. So we did the paper. Remind me to talk about bourbon, vim, and banana. In case I forget. OK. So we're going to dive into the code a bit more. Let's, I'm just going to show you the, um, the, CSS, the SCSS files, because I don't want to give, any way, any, give away any surprises with the um, HTML. So the first, oh, we did the make my paper look bigger. I showed you guys that. And one thing I wanted to point out was the, see this at include? That's utilizing bourbon. 
Oh, I'm not showing you that, am I? I am showing you that. I'm not showing you that. Is this the first time you guys have seen that? Yes. Okay, well, okay, that's okay. Do you guys see this at include now? Yep. Yeah, okay, cool. So that's using bourbon, which I'm importing up here. Basically what bourbon does is it takes this at include animation and then it outputs it as this, which makes it browser compatible and saves you a lot of writing. Um, the next uh, animation function we're gonna define is the circles of skepticism. Can you guys see that? So this is using a CSS transform. It's doing a rotate Z. So you can imagine the Z axis is coming out of your page. So ra rotation would be like this. So it would be like basically a 2D rotation. And then it's scaling, it's doubling in size. So we're gonna put that animation on this mysterious image and see what that looks like. Okay. So you've got your scale and you've got your rotation there. And it's set to infinite right now. OK, the next one, the next animation function we're going to define is, if I can get my mouse up there. Mm. Does anyone know how I can get my mouse up there? Oh, I have to go left, okay. Um, this one's gonna be called Caught in the Act, and we're gonna be doing a translate. So we have like bas basically X and Y distances, the um, values that are passed into translate. So this is basically gonna like move this element into a square, in a square. And then we're defining this function incrimination, which is changing the background from white to red. And then we're applying them to these elements. Um, you'll notice this is, this incrimination is an infinite animation and another thing to note is that I'm setting delay values, delay um, intervals right here and that this forwards is the animation play state and what that does is it allows, so it does a transform and then however the animation, or sorry it does the animation, however the animation ends that's where the element stays, that's what it looks like. If you had backwards it would revert to the beginning of the animation and if you had none, it would just be unstyled at that point. So the next one we're opening is banana.html. And the final thing that I wanted to talk about was a real um, use case for this, um, which is animations um, and sprite sheets. So how many of you have used that in your capstone? No one, okay, so cool. So basically you have this background uh, image URL and it's gonna be this whole page, and this whole image. It's that width, 612, but you really only want one sixth of it at, at a time, right? So you set the background position to um, a certain uh, value, which would be zero, and then you continue, continually go uh, move it every, well you can see zero to 100%, it's moving it, so it, it moves it by one sixth, basically. And so if you did this really fast, he would look like he was walking, right? So let's just open that up. Oh. oh, I have it set to 10 seconds right now. So I can show you what that looks like if it was one second. I think I have my SAS going, so there we go. And finally, I would like to show you uh, places where you can find out more, because it's all pretty awesome. Thank you, guys.